Hi guys, Joe from Total Justice Gaming here with a new deck profile for you guys. Uh, we are going to be looking at one of my favorite characters. We're going to be looking at Gaito and Abigail. As Abigail, Abigail got a brand new rendition this set in Chaos Control Crisis. That is the Death Count Requiem deck. Uh, this is a gimmick deck that lets you potentially auto win the game uh, by stalling out for three to four turns. So... Is this deck going to be good competitive or not? Honestly, I think it's a 50-50 shot. Uh, we have a lot of hyper aggressive decks, and we have Gear Gods now, which is a big, which is control and aggro. Bots keeps getting stronger and stronger. Uh, Thora keeps getting stronger and stronger. So only time will tell. Honestly, I'm as much as I love this deck, I will say this only has a 50-50 shot of being in the competitive scene. I still do believe that the impact last death violence form of Abigail may be higher in terms of competitive viability than the version. Nevertheless, Abigail is one of my favorite characters uh, because I love the voice actor uh, from that voices Cosmic Hiryu from the Yakuza series. I've said this over and over and over again on my Abigail things. So I went ahead and built the deck. Uh, the deck is uh, much larger than I originally intended, but I just couldn't turn down all the fantastic cards in this set. Uh, so this is a 55 card deck with a 10 card sideboard. Uh, I did actually build a sideboard this time and we will discuss it too. So right in the thing, my flag is of course my secret app, uh, secret Gaito flag. Uh, pardon while we focus a little bit. And then my buddy this time around is uh, Annihilation Black Dragon Abigail, which is the secret rare Abigail. And we will get right into the deck profile. So, of course, we are going to be running one, two, three, four copies of the new Abigail. Uh, this Abigail, in particular, let's, is a 621 called Casa Pay Gauge. Uh, all Black Dragon set spells on your field cannot be destroyed nor return, nor return to hand by the opponent's effects. And when he's destroyed or enters the field, destroy monster from the opponent's field. So he protects all your set spells, which are just very from the opponent's effects, which is very good because this guards our death quack for him. Uh, as well as having onboard uh, destruction, and uh, dis uh, when he's destroyed, he gets to destroy something. So good field control. Again, he hits numbers at a six, uh, has a decent credit at a two. We run four of them. Uh, next up, we are going to be running one, two, three copies of the Trial Deck Abigail. Let me snag a copy here to read off. Uh, this is called Casa's Pay Gauge. This is Black Death uh, Dragon of Sentence Abigail. Uh, it's a 611. Uh, could be better, but for what its ability is, I'm more than okay with it having one crit. Uh, one of the attacks destroy monsters in the opponent's field if you do gain life equal to the size of that card. Uh, this is just a fantastic card to have. You gain so much life on this when we were playtesting over the weekend. Uh, this is the this is just a fantastic card. Um, I do don't know if it's going to get replaced or not with the Abigail coming out of Mutation and Evolution, but we'll see when that time comes. But right now I'm running it out of three of. Uh, during our playtesting, we ran into a real big MVP, Four and I, we were playtesting Gear Gods versus Abigail. Uh, you'll see that match video later on uh, in the week. And that is Black Crest Dragon Erbo. Uh, snag another copy. We are running this out of four of. Uh, when this card is destroyed, it's a 2-1-4, so it's got kind of a defense to it, but not really, because the majority of the power creep has raised everything to be a standard 5k, if not above. Uh, so four doesn't really cut it anymore, but there are some units that cannot naturally get worlds that cannot naturally get over 4,000 without link attacking. Um, when this card is destroyed, put the top card of your deck into your gauge and gain a life. If there's a black dragon set spell, also gain a gauge. So we play him in the center. We uh, can either sack him to noble sacrifice, black dragon witch rule, um, or he just gets destroyed, he gains me a life and potentially two gauge, if not more, with the other spells I said. So he's really, really good. He was the big MVP of those playtesting uh, play matches. Uh, next up, we're running three copies of Redzit. Uh, Redzit's a 5k that could potentially become a 7k if you have a set spell, Black Dragon set spell on the field. 
And on top of that, uh, every time he attacks, I gain a life. I need a lot of life gain in this deck because I drop myself uh, to life very quickly to pay for Death Count Requiem. On top of that, um, I just need a ton of life to stall in order to make Requiem happen. So he was already addition to this deck. I run him out of three of. Uh, in order to keep make sure I got Gage healthy, because I have a lot of recalling effects, I am running two copies of Black uh, Black Deedum Zarkron. Zarkron, excuse me. Uh, we all know what he does. He's a 3-1-2 that says when he comes into play, I gain a Gage, and then if there are six more cards in the drop zone, I gain an additional Gage. Um, I have get Gage pretty regularly, but just in case I run dry, I am running two of him. Uh, next up, we're running four copies of Black Crest Dragon Zillowzeist. I'm still not quite sure how to pronounce his actual name. It's a little rough. Uh, he's a 316, so he has a decent butt. He has no call cost, but when he comes to play, I can pay two gauge and go get a uh, card with set from my deck into my hand. Um... So this lets me go get set spells like uh, Invitation, uh, Obituary, which are in the deck, and of course, naturally, go get uh, Death Requiem, should it actually not be in the deck, uh, in hand, excuse me, should not be in hand. So we run, of course, four of him because he just, you know, makes everything set up really nicely, and we are moving on Next up, we are running four copies of Day Leopard, Black Crest Dragon Day Leopard. Sorry about that. Um, Day Leopard is a 616. Oh, he's Marvel Universe. Um, he cannot be called to the center. His call cost is uh, pay gauge, put the top card of the deck into the soul. Uh, the reason why I run him is he is an onboard Black Dragon remade, which triggers with a lot of abilities. For when it's destroyed, stuff happens, like Erbo, uh, Abigail, and other th uh, most importantly, Erbo and Annihilation Abigail. Uh, because they trigger and keep on the board, I gain the gate, potentially two gauge on the life, or I get to blow up a monster on their field. So he becomes the target first, then whatever's second. Uh, moving into weapons, we are currently running three copies of Gale Haken. Move that forward a little bit. Uh, it's a 1-0 that really put us off initially because we didn't know what its effect initially was. Then we saw it and it's like, well, I'm running a ton of this. So we pick... Uh, Quip cost is pay gauge. I uh, can attack him if there's a monster in the center. All black dragon sets can't be destroyed, can't be returned to hand, and um, the soul of the cards cannot be put into the drop zone by the opponent's effects. When it, this card attacks a monster, destroy that monster. So it just outright kills a monster and guards from all forms of um, card destruction, card return, or soul destruction, which is very, very important in this deck, as this is a uh, auto-win through uh, Requiem. Uh, this protects us from stuff like Eerie Wailing and Sneak Attack, so they got to get through Abigail and this before they can even touch deck Death Requiem. So we run this out of three of, and I'll explain why we run out of three of. Running out of three of because I am also running two copies of Dragon Force Style Retaliation. Uh, I fulfill the cost quite easily. Uh, all I got is have a monster with Abigail in my. Um, uh, on my field of drop zone, which that's easy in this deck. We run a lot of Abigails. Uh, then if my life comes to zero, I can pay two gauge. Very easy because we get gauge like you wouldn't believe. Uh, I pitch a card in my hand. Again, easy because we have a lot of draw and card recursion. And uh, I, since it's at an 8-3, I get to come back to life so long as it's not something like uh, Tempest X Buster or uh, the... Crystal Dragon um, Impact, which names escapes me. I apologize. Uh, and when it's equipped, I get to blow up a monster in the field, and they mill five cards. 
Uh, it doesn't really take full advantage of the mill aspect this deck, but I'm running it because it brings me back to life against other matchups such as Oni, uh, An Ancient Dragon like Jaeger, uh, stuff like that. So that's the reason I'm running this. I'm running this only at a 2-up. Uh, naturally, because it is this deck, we are running four copies of, uh, Death Count Requiem. This is the automatic win condition. It says, uh, pay three life as a cast cost. Uh, I set it. Uh, it abilities cannot be nullified. The end of your opponent's turn, put the top card of your deck into your gate, into the soul of this card. Uh, then, uh, if there are three, uh, or more soul in this card, put this card, uh, from my drop zone, uh, from my field to my drop zone, I win the game. So, this is your primary win condition. It is a gimmick win. I still don't know how to feel about that. Uh, it did win me some games in playtesting. We do have one recorded. Where it was a 2-1-1 against Gear Gods in Ford's favor, but I still did get Requiem off on him. Uh, I really have mixed feelings about this. I really just wanted to build this deck just to have a second Abigail deck. Uh, I do think this is a fantastic way to win. I'm just not sure that it's the competitive way to win. But we made the deck nonetheless. So, next up for spells. Uh, we are running two copy of Invitation to Death Ground. Uh, it's a set spell with no cast cost, which is really good. Uh, your opponent cannot call monsters from the drop zone, meaning any deck that has heavy recursion. Uh, they do not get that recursion. Uh, on top of that, this is also a continuous onboard snake gaze that targets any card, uh, be it weapon or monster. And I get to uh, rest it for two gauge. So this is really big. This is probably one of the best cards in the game. The only reason I'm running out of two of is I got Zillow's Ice and I got a ton of draw on this deck, as you guys will see. So right now I'm running this out of two of. Next up, we're running this. Uh, next up, we're running two Obituary. Uh, another set spell because this deck revolves heavily around Black Dragon set spells. Uh, cast cost is Pay Gauge. Set. Its abilities can't be nullified. Uh, when this card is set, if I have a Black Dragon in my drop zone, I get to draw a card. So. Uh, more consistency through draw, and when I blow it up, uh, my opponent chooses a card and discard it. Uh, the way we blow it up in this deck is with Black Ritual to make a nice little combo of profit for me and uh, minus one for the opponent. So I run this out of two of. Again, I can search out with Zilla's Eyes or just draw into it because I have a lot of draw effects. Running three copies of Voice Removal. Uh, it's Cast cost is pay gauge, counter, call a size one or less black dragon monster from my drop zone by paying its call cost. I can only play removal voice once per turn. Uh, this lets me get like Irbo back if it's already been destroyed. Uh, this lets me bring any Abigail back, which is very, very good um, because it potentially gets me a third destruction, setting up for a fourth destruction if it's Annihilation Abigail, because it comes into play, blow it up, if they blow it up, it blows up something else. Um, bring it back with the removal voice to set up another, another uh, Abigail destruction, forcing them to, you know, keep blowing up stuff. So, run this out of three up. Next up, we're running three copies of Black Ritual. I get to destroy a Black Dragon on my field as the casting cost. I put the top card of my deck into my gauge. I gain a life, and I draw two cards. Uh, one of the best draw spells I think I've run into since Hiding Goni. Uh, very easy to pull off. I kind of wish it was counter speed, but I understand why it's not, because it just does so much for asking so little. I run this out of three of Next up, we are running, of course, uh, four Black Dragon Shields, because I need the life gain. We are running four Black Dragon Remades. Uh, I chose to run these over Midnight Shadow, because this can trigger, again, Abigail. This can trigger Irbo, which lets me gain a life and potentially two gauge. And they pretty much just give it to me for free. Uh, they give me free destruction and gets to stay out on the field. Uh, I've just found this a lot more useful playtesting on my own against some of my other decks. Uh, 
and uh, going around the forums and looking and looking at YouTube and seeing what's what for this deck, uh, and just came to the conclusion that uh, Midnight Shadow is best in the sideboard and Black Dragon Remade is best in uh, main board. And then the final card of the set, the deck. Is Noble Sacrifice, which I pay a gauge. Counter speed, destroy a black dragon monster in the field. If you do, gain two life and draw a card. Uh, this lets me um, screw up attack phases for the opponent. Uh, they can potentially blow something up with Day Leopard. Uh, potentially try to destroy something. I Day Leopard. They try to swing at it again. And then I use this to sack the monsters, uh, negating their attack because there's nothing for them to declare an attack on. Uh, and it also profits me. So really, really good card. I'm running this out of four of. All right. Uh, we are doing something we don't usually do. This is a sideboard for the deck. Um, this is the first time I've ever had a sideboard in the game. Um, I know that sounds really bad, but in my meta, we really haven't been sideboarding. It's something we're starting to get into the habit of now. And as such, I need to create a sideboard for this deck. Uh, I just ran over it. Uh, Midnight Shadow. Uh, I main board, uh, sideboarded this because we don't have a lot of bots, uh, so I don't need a lot of negation, just a lot of uh, can't be destroyed effects in my meta at the moment. But I'd say it won't change, and since I potentially am going to try to go to Indianapolis, uh, I do need a way to shut down stuff like bots the undying, or unyielding bots, whichever version it's unyielding bots. So this lets me negate the attack as opposed to prevent its destruction, even though it's still considered destroyed, so that means bots would stand back up. In this case, Midnight Shadow just says can't, uh, they can't do it unless they link attack. Uh, so I'm running that at a 4 to replace the, um, uh, what's it called, uh, Black Dragon Remates. Um... This is a personal thing, and I don't know if this is true or not. I am running four Death Count Serenades. Um, these are going to replace three of the four Death Count Requiems in the deck. The reason for this is the Athora matchup. Um, I don't know how good this is going to be. This is just in testing. So the Athora matchup is already an uphill battle, but if they uh, Asterism you on a Death Count Requiem, it doesn't carry over because it's not a continuous effect. But um, you're not, not putting them into a state of loss with Serenade. You're just dropping them to one life. And I'm unsure how much life gain uh, Prism Dragon has. So it drops them to one life, and all you got to do is just deal with them a single point of damage. Uh, that's really easy to do with another card in the sideboard that I have. So we're running this out of three of to replace three to four uh, Requims. And then finally, we are running. Three copies of Void Omni Lord uh, Nego Balls. I hope I'm saying that right. Lord knows that's just one of the worst names they could have given this thing. Um, I'm seeing this a lot used now. I'm glad I picked up three copies uh, in my mad quest to get the original Makuro. So he's a 6-2-3, call cost pay gauge. When a monster in your field is destroyed, deal damage uh, equal to that monster's size. It, he doesn't even have to be in combat. It's just, um, he just has to sit there and let, uh, let destruction happen. Uh, he pairs wonderfully with both of the Abigails. Uh, if he's sitting there and Abigail comes in the thing, I can blow up something. Uh, say in a Gear God deck, uh, size 3. Um, then I gain three life off of him. Uh, if I somehow manage to get rid of a gear god, I deal, or excuse me, I deal them three damage, not gain three life. I apologize. Uh, if I somehow manage to get rid of uh, gear god seven, uh, that's 30 damage, that's game. Uh, should they use chaos strain, I still manage to somehow destroy um, gear god via some kooky uh, combat trick. Um, they potentially lose 33 life because they could Chaos Drain. Uh, I'm attacking it. They only have one card on board. The Abigail swings at him. It blow He counters. He and he has no target with Chaos Drain because Abigail nukes uh, whatever he's attempted to Chaos Drain just on attack. Um, this is the other Abigail, and then he takes over. 
So this is my sideboard. I don't do this very often, guys. Uh, it's my first time sideboarding. Uh, hopefully these choices made sense to you. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching uh, Total Justice Gaming. Uh, thanks for watching this deck profile. You know I love doing Black Dragons for everybody. Get these lined up. Hey, there we go. Uh, so again, thanks for watching Total Justice Gaming. We work hard, for, work hard to bring you guys Buddy Fight five days a week, be they deck profiles, match videos, or gimmick matches.